Hi guys, this is your video for station 8 and 9, the structure and properties of water. The first video is just going to go over the structure of water. It will answer this entire sheet. So if you notice there are two empty boxes, the top one is going to be your first diagram, the one underneath your second diagram. You have four questions which have blank spaces that you need to fill in. I put those words in red and bold in the presentation. Just make sure you're filling them in as you go. So here's our first diagram. This is a simple structural model of a water molecule. So you have your two hydrogens and your one oxygen, which we know from our chemical formula, H2O, tells us there's two hydrogens, one oxygen. Now you see how it's sort of a wide V shape? This is the actual shape of a water molecule. It's what we call a bent molecule. And I'll talk about why that is in a second. But the first thing I'm going to do is draw in the valence shell electrons, which you should also do on your diagram. Now, valence shell electrons are your electrons that go in the outermost shell. So we know our first orbital gets 2, our second gets 8, and our third gets 8. Oxygen being element number 8 is going to get its two first shells, and then it's going to get 6 in its second shell. So I'll draw those 6 in right now. So there's oxygen 6 electrons, valence shell electrons, in green. Now, there's two lone ones down there. What those are is that is the one electron that oxygen is sharing with each of its hydrogens. Now hydrogen is also, because it's a covalent bond, they're both sharing here, hydrogen also has to share one of its electrons with oxygen. So I'm going to draw in hydrogen's electrons in blue. So there we go. There is your water molecule with all of the valence shell electrons. You have your one electron from each hydrogen being shared, and then you have your six green electrons from oxygen covalently bonded between oxygen and hydrogen, meaning that they're sharing electrons. Now you can tell from just looking at this picture that there are a lot more electrons crowded around the oxygen. That is actually going to be true in real life. Oxygen having eight protons or eight positively charged particles in its nucleus is much better at pulling on electrons. Because remember, opposite charges are going to attract those electrons are going to be much more attracted to the nucleus of the oxygen than they are of the hydrogen, meaning they will actually move more towards the oxygen. This will make the oxygen more negative. What I've drawn in there is the chemical symbol to show you a partial charge. So that is showing that the oxygen end of your water molecule is partially negative. It's not a full negative charge like an ion. It just tends to be in the molecule where more electrons are. Now, if we notice that end is more negative, that means by contrast, where our hydrogens are, it's going to be more positive. So that's your final drawing of your water molecule. Make sure you have this all down. Now, that tendency of oxygen to be more negative and hydrogen more positive is what we call polarity. So water is a polar molecule which means the oxygen and hydrogen share the electrons unevenly. The red words are the ones that you need to fill in for question number one. So polar, again, just means that the oxygen and hydrogen, they are not sharing the electrons evenly. The oxygen is hogging more of the electrons, making it more negative, and it will behave negative. And the hydrogens get less electrons, which make them more positive, and they will behave positive. Now you may have heard somewhere that water is the universal solvent. What that means is that basically water has the ability to dissolve many molecules. If you remember, about 60 to 65 percent of the human body is water. We have to drink water every day and water is so important to us and the reason is is because so many of our chemical processes take place in a water-based environment. So right here in red we have Water is able to dissolve ions and polar molecules because of its polarity. So that's what you need to write in. So again, ions are going to be charged particles, and polar molecules, we just went over, are those that are not full charged, but they have slight positive ends and slight negative ends. So these will break up in water. And the example that we have here is a salt crystal. So the chlorine in salt is negative, and the sodium in salt is positive. The reason that salt dissolves in water is because those negative parts will get attracted to the positive behaving hydrogens and the positive sodium will get attracted to the negatively behaving oxygens. And this will actually break the salt crystal apart, which is why when you mix salt and water, it disappears. 
Last but not least, we have one of the most important properties of water, which is hydrogen bonding. Now, hydrogen bonding is the attraction between the negative oxygen of one atom and the positively behaving hydrogen of another atom. What this does is it makes sort of a lattice or a network of water molecules. This is when we see things like surface tension or cohesion. It's because this hydrogen bonding, this attraction of water to other water molecules. Water will sometimes like to be with other water molecules more than it likes to be with anything else. And that's what we call hydrophobic. So for example, water would much rather hang out with itself than it would hang out with oil. So that's why when you pour oil on top of water, water just kicks that oil right out because it doesn't want to be with oil, it wants to be with its other water molecules. So this is your second diagram right here. You need to draw in your two water molecules, label each of the molecules, and draw in your hydrogen bonds. You also need to draw in your partial charges, which I'll do for you now. So make sure you're drawing those partially negative signs on your oxygens and those partially positive signs on your hydrogens. Last but not least, question number four. Hydrogen bonds are much weaker compared to ionic and covalent bonds. Sometimes they don't even get referred to as bonds. They're just called van der Waals force. We will refer to them as hydrogen bonds in this class, but it's important to realize that hydrogen bonds, as far as bonds breaking go, is pretty easy to break. That's the end of the video on the structure of water. You should go ahead now and follow the directions for watching the second video, which will take you through cohesion, adhesion, and the density of water. You should have completed both diagrams and answered questions one through four.